Wow, what a treat. The staff all wearing the shirts that Jimmy Norton brought in for them uh, to wear yesterday. These are all shirts that um, apparently his, his mommy gave him for Christmas. Yeah. And they're wonderful shirts. Uh, and as I just look around the room, uh, I see Sam wearing the gray on gray on gray striped shirt. A collar up. He's trying to he's trying to work it and keep it cool. Is it tucked in and kind of bloused out because it was so long? No, it's not. It's just, that's what looks cool. You tuck it in and puff it out. That's what looks right. cool. Yeah. See, Sam, he's a young, hip guy. Sam's uh, shirt doesn't look that bad. No, Jimmy. it's tolerable. But you leave the stickers on it because that's how we wear them now. Yeah. <laughs> is that how we wear them now? And the collar up is uh, kind of a the girls like it. Cool look. The girls like yeah. it. I mean, the. Do they? It's obvious that your mom doesn't understand understand sizes. These shirts are huge. Yeah. They're like cents on these kids. And they're not much bigger or smaller than you, Jimmy. They're pretty much within your, you know, within your size. Yeah. Dan's just got a, a regular kind of long sleeve T-shirt thing with some real heavy stitching. So it's exposed stitching. Um, oh, mine's it's, dull. <laughs> it's not that bad. But thank God it's uh, wrinkly as hell. Yeah. Because that looks pretty... Pretty bad. I didn't take good care of my shirt. All, wrink all wrinkly. Why would you? You look um, all right in yours, except you're 6'5", and it fits you well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She has no clue of sizes. Because no. then we have Danny. <laughs> who looks like he should be making airport runs. <laughs> yeah, Danny looks like a, stay, a cab driver. I just want to stay safe at night, so, you know, when cars are when I'm crossing the street, people can see me. It glows. I know. It's like a crossing guard vest. It's a burgundy, just... Just a uh, bright burgundy, a, a burgundy of awfulness, it and it's like shiny. That. It's yeah. so shiny. It looks like a tablecloth at a catering hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the color and and the the texture of that shirt is. It shouldn't be a shirt. That material. There was probably a bolt of material that came in for something complete, like a sail. It came in for a boat sail, and uh, they said, "Ah, well, screw it, put it Al in the shirt." Alfani got it by accident. Alfani looks like Dracula's wedding shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it really does stink. Uh, and At least when I spill wine on it later, nobody will. No one will notice. No. It looks very nice. Great <laughs> success. Make my day. Great success. <laughs> I wear it to scare the Jew. <laughs> very shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a Borat shirt. <laughs> And then uh, who else? Uh, Travis. Uh, Travis has probably one of the best shirts I've seen. It fits perfectly because the end of the shirt touches the top of my knees. That is a um, the old guy on the Little Rascals night shirt kind of a thing where it's like, I don't know what that was in the olden days. They would wear night shirts and it would go down to their knees. The thing is, Great. it's so long on you. It, and it's blue, so it looks like he, a smock from school. It looks like a Bayshore uh, court shirt. <laughs> like Travis has to go to court for some kind of minor traffic thing. And he never dresses. And he never dresses up, and he found this shirt that maybe Grandma bought for Christmas and got it out of the closet. Just awful. Well, Buttoned right up to the top. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got your uh, your size sticker on there, which is good. Right. Sam told me that that's the way the kids wear that, it these they're, days. They wear it. Yeah. That's what he says. You know. wear them. Just we, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. It All does right. look like Thank a you, painter's Jim. smock. Yeah. You should be uh, giving lessons. <laughs> so, uh, there you go, oh, Jimmy. Oh, that's bad. What, what, what? Travis banged some dude, slept over, and is wearing his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I look like Kate in last week's Lost episode. Uh, oh, oh, can whoa. I pick you up and no. show your buttocks? <laughs> Kate looking hot in last week's episode. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. see that one. It's not on iTunes yet. Oh, it oh. should be. It's, not. it's like the next day, right? Yeah, what the what the uh, hell? <laughs> you're not gonna believe what happened on Lost, Jimmy. Wow. Her, her ass when uh, yep she got picked up there. Yep, and she was just wearing the shirt. Mm. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> she does not have an ass like uh, the Jew. So, make my day, Jew. <laughs> it's becoming one of those movies now where if it's on, you have to just you have to just watch it and course. laugh at him. <laughs> it's. It's just too goddamn funny. Yeah, Travis. We're great at visual bits, so it's uh, Jimmy Shirt Day on the Opie and Anthony Show. Jimmy yeah. Shirt Day. And uh, I think you could use one of Jimmy's shirts. I'm starting to notice um, that. Uh, you, you, what what you, are you noticing? I, I believe you came to work with that yesterday, Anthony. Uh, you know, I wear and a lot I, of things that look exactly the same. I'm like Fred Flintstone. I also believe you wore that same shirt at the big corporate event we did last night. 
And now this morning, you're still wearing that shirt. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that means you, you you still have the same underwear on as yesterday. Well, let me tell you something. The same socks. <laughs> I made the same jeans. And uh, I also noticed that you were chewing gum when you when you walked into the office. I'm thinking, you are a smart one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Wow, he didn't even like buy a, a toothbrush. Usually, when you're you know you're staying in the city and you you don't know you're staying in the city. Next thing you know, you got a whole new wardrobe. You go shopping. Yeah, but you decided to say F it. I decided around, against right? it. Could I have a um, a uh, mere scrub of a human being uh, come in here and get me a toothbrush and a little thing of toothpaste from Dwayne Reed? <laughs> I saw you chewing gum. I'm like, now that what is it he jigs doing? up. <laughs> I was I was chewing Orbit. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, all right, we'll get yeah, to the at some brush. point. But um, yeah, I I didn't plan on staying in. I thought this corporate event started at seven thirty last night, uh, and I was just going to drive home, uh, change, get some stuff, and come back. Mm -hmm. I was then informed that this thing started where we had to be there at four. Right. So there was no going home, even though we were hitting the stage at six thirty. Right. So I, I went to uh, so to me I'm thinking well hotel. we could show up at six fifteen oh no you have to be there at four yeah to prepare prepare for what for for what for what so I went to the hotel uh, and just I was exhausted crashed right out uh, woke up just in time to get in in the cab to go to the event yeah and I, everyone else is in suits and ties. Even Opie had a nice dress shirt on and everything and nice shoes. Well, I live in the city. I shower. Yeah, and yeah. did the right thing. <laughs> I showed up exactly like this. And you know what? I said, I said to Opie, I go, you know what's cool? I'm a personality. So I could dress however I want. You know how like. No, 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 no. That's how you spun it. Because when you first saw me. I did me, spin it. I said, you, you oh, my went, God, I'm a slob. <laughs> you kind of <laughs> went to me. Oh, wow. You look good. Uh, ah, I figured what the hell. Just wear the same stuff I had on earlier. Why bother? <laughs> And then I just start spinning it like I'm a personality, yeah, like uh, like rock guys show up to things and they just wear their like rock clothes mm -hmm. and stuff. They don't have to dress like corporate suits and stuff like that. So then I, I felt better about myself because like, hey, this is my look. This is what I do now. Um, made me feel better. I don't know if, you know, shaking hands with Les Moonves dressed like a slob was very nice. But, <laughs> right. but yeah. uh, it, it worked out. Les Moonves comes in. Hello, Opie. Hello, Anthony. It was nice that he still knows our names. That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. And then we waited for uh, about two hours, and then we went on stage. And, um, well, they told us, E-Rock, you've already heard? The, the word is getting out. Um, they told us, look, there's this new uh, recording artist, Duffy. She's blown up. She really is. Uh, Mercury recording artist. They reminded us yes. of that a million effing times. And they're like, all you have to do after this huge, boring presentation, although they didn't say boring. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they, they should have, but they didn't say <laughs> They said, go on stage in front of 800 like salespeople and GMs and PDs from across the East Coast and just uh, and just uh, say, hi, uh, thanks for coming. Here's Duffy. Like, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Show our faces, whatever. It's easy. And then somewhere uh, getting close. It was on stage when they handed us the mics. They go. That's when they informed us. They go, well, we're going to need five or six minutes from you guys. And we're like, uh. So now we got to do five we have to up do on five. the stage in front of corporate and salespeople and, in and front of eight, clients. 800 stiffs. That have just been lulled, <laughs> that have just been lulled to sleep right. by uh, corporate people. By a, by a presentation where I felt like I was back at uh, Geneseo, sitting through some boring lecture. It should have just been... We get it. We rule. They should have just been Ugh. playing a lullaby and pumping nitrous oxide into right, the right. Uh, uh, venue. That's what it was like. It was the, let's spend a quarter million dollars to tell everybody that, that we rule. We rule. Let me tell you what's going on here at CBS. Yeah. Really? Although they got some kind of very interesting porthole technology that's going to be hitting. Uh, there's some cool hitting soon. stuff happening as far as web integration goes. i got to be honest with you. Yeah. I was absolutely impressed with what's going to be going on. But they with, didn't have uh, to talk about CBS for, uh, an hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and a half though with PowerPoint presentations and yeah. Ugh. So so they give us the mics. They go, we need five or six, and uh, you go. And, and I think it was Anthony. He goes, uh, well, yeah, we could do five or six. It's not gonna be pretty, but we'll goes, do it. Someone's gonna get hurt. <laughs> we, went, dude, we went out there. We were the biggest douches. Just ripped apart but we're, everybody. But we were getting huge laughs. I don't know what oh. that means now though. I was getting a lot of text messages. I forgot to tell you. 
And people just write, oof, very funny, but brutal. Brutal. What do you hear, Iraq? I, all I know is somebody came up to me and said, that was really funny. I can't believe you called the president of CBS a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually use the word douche? Yeah. yeah. I said douche, and I called him a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we had a rough year with this company, yeah. so we're, God, we're, we're getting him back a little bit. Cut me some slack. <laughs> That'll smooth things over, though. <laughs> Thanks for the good year, douche. Yeah. <laughs> All's forgotten. I do believe we were taken out of a few markets we should have been taken out of, and it was it was our payback. Well, what did you hear, Iraq? I, I don't know if this was correct, but were you <laughs> mocking him saying he still looked like his high school photos? No, they put up his high school picture up there. Or No, it was, it was a picture. It was Dan Mason, president of uh, CBS yeah. Radio. And um, they put his picture up there from, like, the 70s when he was a DJ. And, uh, you know, he had a big swooping head of hair, and he's behind some old equipment, and he's just smiling. And then he proceeds to tell us his life story up there about what, how he got into radio by um, uh, calling up radio stations and winning stuff. Started calling radio stations at 12. At 12 and winning things. And uh, then he was like a stunt boy, and he had his hair dyed blue at one point. So well, he would I, dye his hair the color of like the high school that yeah, showed high school colors showed the most interest or something, some dumb something hacky contest. Like that. Right. But uh, so when I got up there, I was like, "Well, it's nice to be part of the Dan Mason biography." Uh, and he, because what he was saying, I said, uh, "And it's nice to know that you could start your your radio career and become president of a, a, radio, a broadcasting company by starting your career as a, a prize pig." <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> I gotta put the phone down, douche. <laughs> but he's trying to impress everybody by saying he he fell in love with radio at when he was twelve years old and stuff. Yeah, and like, Dan Mason's been calling radio stations since twelve, and I just went, "Wow, well, yeah, wow, that's great." Oh, it just, was. We were so brutal. dry and so sarcastic. Anthony didn't even show his eyes. His he was wearing his five eleven oh, hat. I pulled it down over my head. And I'm just. <laughs> I had my head down. I'm just like. Ah. Screw it. Over his eyes and just, just. I'm not even making eye contact with these people. I said it was great to have, uh, to see so many corporate people, uh, there in the crowd, many of who had fired us, <laughs> which was uncomfortable again. <laughs> D uh, Don Belucas was there and, uh, he pointed us. out the fact that he fired us a couple of times and. He fired us, uh, for the mayor's pride yeah, officially and I, now we have to work with him again. I called him Luca Brasi. <laughs> <Right>. He's a <laughs> big guy and. What did you say? We, people. we played golf with him last oh, summer or whatever. And I didn't turn my back on him because I was convinced he was going to take his driver and <laughs> smash it into the back of my head. Take you out. It was just brutal. It got it got really brutal up there. But people were laughing. I mean, yeah. they were really, uh, uh, it seemed to be enjoying it. But the brass just got hammered. I had it. Like I said, someone had to get hurt. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna sit there and get flop sweat. Put the phone down, douche. Douche. Yeah. Who's gonna say the next time Eatman calls to negotiate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, God damn you, boys! It was a. And then we had to walk through everybody to get out, and it was like it was. It was. It was interesting. Yeah, and, they were like, oh, oh wow, well, that well, was good, but ooh, ooh. a lot of uh, compliments and a lot of uh, uncomfortableness. Yeah, good for you guys. And then it was fun. And then uh, Maura, who's the GM here, she's the beer drinking GM <laughs> that runs this place in New nice. York. We were tipping a few back. Uh, yeah, well, she she uh, has a Budweiser with Anthony, and then she slams hers and goes, "Just let it be known, put it on the record that I finished my I beer finished before my beer you did." First. And she's drinking it out of the can. <laughs> right. Like, I put mine in a cup at least, a little glass plastic cup thing. And I go, you want a cup? She goes, nah. And just starts drinking it out of the can. She goes, there you go. I finished mine before you. I said, I had two already. Yeah. She's she's an animal, this one. This, oh, this you want to party with her? You are feeling like crap the next day. It's more, we haven't even got into it yet, but she's an animal that runs this place here in New York. And then she introduces us to uh, some buyers. And, uh, and one of the guys, very nice, but uh, he shakes our hands. And he goes, so which one of you are going to kiss me? You're going to kiss me. Like, and, oh, okay. And, and me and Ann are like, we get it. You're over-the-top gay guy. <laughs> were we supposed to be shocked at that? Because <laughs> that was his opening line, like he was going to be shocking. All right, which one of you are going to kiss me? Kiss me. <laughs> 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 but apparently, you know, he's very good for the company. He's a big, oh, yeah, big he, buyer. Yeah, well, th that's why we uh, we could throw a few lines. That's in. right.
Anyway, it was interesting. That's why Anthony's here today in the same clothes he had on Same clothes. So, yeah, I I thought it was going to be a lot later. And then, uh, eh, eh, you know, stay in. Yeah, why, why not? not? Don't a New York to get a toothbrush on short notice. I can definitely understand why you wouldn't go out and get that. Well, there is. Especially with that, he's, uh, you know, hanging out in a hotel. I, I think that's in the mini bar. <laughs> no, it wasn't. They didn't There's, have it in uh, the mini bar. Beer's in there, though, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, any particular type of toothpaste? Just get me Crest. Thank you. All reliable. I'll give Crest. it a brushing. Mm-hmm. What else did you hear about the uh, the big gig last night, E-Rock? Um <clears throat> That was it, because in mid-sentence, the conversation just kind of stopped. <laughs> what? Someone had a little too much fun at the event last night, so um, I only heard bits and pieces. And what, then, your chick? Yeah. Oh, boy. You got hammered? Yeah. <laughs> at the event? Um, no, maybe the after party hosted by our GM. Oh! <laughs> she had it. She's hosting it. What? This Mora, man, she's she's like I said, an animal. Oh, there's the picture of uh, young Dan Mason. <laughs> yeah, Dan uh, and his hair. There. Look at that. Look at that head of hair. Oh. Jesus Christ, looks like he's a member of the animals. <laughs> <laughs> David Cassidy, <laughs> lovely. David Cassidy, yeah. <laughs> what a head of hair on that guy. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, so the after party was uh, a, a little raucous, was that it? I, I suppose so. I guess I'll find out the rest of it today. But um, from what I heard, yeah, it was pretty good. All right, very nice. So, Yeah. Well, we were responsible and we got out of there. That's for sure. I Not because we were responsible. We didn't want to hang out with those people. <laughs> I haven't met the woman that runs this. Uh... Oh, man. Did Kenny leave for my toothbrush yet? Maybe. See if he's here. All right. You know, Jimmy has never met Maura. Is she coming in today or is she too hungover? Probably too hungover, you rock just said. All right, I'll uh, <laughs> real what? schlitz in a can girl. I like that. <laughs> Everyone yeah. else heard you oh, say yeah. she's too hungover to come in today. She Iraq. she can party that woman. Yeah, she and, can party. And then the uh, the last observation before we take our first break and uh, start the radio program. <laughs> we uh, haven't started it yet. We have just added our fifteenth producer to the Opie and Anthony show today. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, a guy named Stunt Brain has joined the Opie and Anthony show. Uh, wait a minute. Stunt Brain. Stunt Brain, yes. Yeah. And and don't mess with that because he uh, he's had that uh, copywritten. It's copywritten. Yeah. Um, he also likes it's... to be known as Coach Mike. Ugh. On hats and... Coach Mike. We'll, yeah. we'll meet him a little later on in the show. Did he leave? Yeah. Could you email him? What? Okay. Thank you. You need what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what was that? The secret message is going on. What gave it away that he wanted it to be secret? The fact that he mouthed it without saying. <laughs> good it's, point. Good point. It's the type of, um, you know, the type of uh, toothpaste I like. Yeah. All right. I, I decided against Crest. You did. Yeah, I like Colgate. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's showtime. We, uh... Wow, that was weird, huh, Ant? Uh, very, very strange. We barely made it in time for the XM portion of the show because we ran into an an old PD. An old friend. An old friend. An old got, friend. I gotta say, in a weird way, it was nice to see him. <laughs> really? Yeah. We just ran into the ice cream PD for the people that linger longer. Uh, On the streets yes. of Manhattan, it, in between here and K-Rock. What was the ice cream PD? Because I'm here, I don't even know what that is. He uh, he was our first PD when we moved to New York ten years ago this this summer, and, and he's called the ice cream PD because uh, during uh, a very heated moment on the show when he should have been there and paying attention and uh, being involved and backing us up and doing whatever you know a PD does for uh, the the popular show on the station, he came in oblivious to what was happening, licking an ice cream cone, going, "Hey, what's up, guys?" And we're like, what's up? That, eh. where where have you been the last two we're, or three we're, hours? We're at war here. <laughs> yeah, we were taking on K Rock actually. Yeah, Gary Wall. So we saw him on the street there, and we had a nice little talk. Mm-hmm. Living in Nashville, he's doing business here in New York. He won't he won't tell us what kind of business he's no, in. No, no, I don't no, think he wants of, us to like blow up his spot. Some or something. kind of business, but he's in New York. Yeah, doing something. And I go. Uh, because he knows we've trashed him over the oh, years. Oh, yeah. Go, I'm sure he hears it all the time. I go, so, uh, Gary, right to his face, I go, Gary, so this is awkward. Do you, do you hate do us? Do you hate us? Do you love us? Where, where are we at? And what did he say? 
I'm ambivalent. <laughs> ambivalent. It just goes, I'm ambivalent. <laughs> I got I mean, right. to be honest. I kind of missed the guy. He's an honest <laughs> answer, I guess. He had a way of just <laughs> presenting himself that I kind of miss. <laughs> <laughs> ambivalent. <laughs> ambivalent. I'm ambivalent. Uh, that's funny. As honest as, as could be. All yeah, right. He was quite the character. Yeah. What do we got for this side of the program? Well, some good dirty stuff. Some good dirty stuff. Where's Steve? Yeah, I like, here? I like dirty stuff. He's uh, he's talking to Stunt Brain over at the other joint. Why he is. Know, why? Just I don't know to get on the same page. And... Meeting of the minds. <laughs> uh, hello, Mister Stunt Brain. <laughs> I'm Steve C. I'm Steve C. Executive producer. Oh. And that's how you be become the executive producer. Wait a minute, you're executive producer too? How's oh, this no. going to work out? Well, <laughs> that's good to have two different ones. That will never conflict. It's good. Two work out well. different <laughs> CBS is right. executive producers. <laughs> yeah, because well, like, they'll both be looking out for the interest of the entire show as a whole. And it's good to have audio on one side that you can't play on the other or that you don't play on the other. That's perfect. Stunt, exactly. stunt <laughs> brain. Uh, it'll work out well. Was the CBS hire to keep their interest? Sure. No one gives a fuck about anybody else. In there. Not and, one uh, big show. It's yep. two separate shows. Fuck everybody. <laughs> I like my company. Go oh, fuck your company. That's good. That's, the way you do business. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. We're in the middle yeah, like no, the fucking exactly children of a horrid be. divorce. It's where you want to be. It's perfect. Uh, the two companies, yeah, they don't want to acknowledge each other. So who suffers? We do. We have to walk yeah. from one studio to another. You don't think it'd be... You know, it was kind of fun in the beginning, but now it's just a complete hassle. Yeah, big pain in the ass. Like, why can't we just, at 9 o'clock, say, see you later, do a quick break, and mm -hmm. just continue? We have to pack up our shit every day, walk, wait wait in line at an elevator bank in this building, Yeah, come upstairs, they're still, like, setting up. I like it actually, dude. Cause it gives us a little bit of air and stuff. It gives it was, us time to reset. It was fun at first, but now it's just it's just stupid. Yeah, it really is it's stupid. Lame. We're the ones that have to suffer because they don't want to. Because neither one wants to budge. Well, we need them to broadcast from Mars facility. No, we need them to broadcast from Mars. Yeah, the listeners don't know the difference. <laughs> You know, I listen to the replay. I can't even tell when we left one, you know, studio and went to the other. The bottom line is this: there's going to be certain things on yeah. XM that are that are like perfect, like because you know, sometimes in morning radio you replay things. You know, like the next morning, or whatever, and like you might hear something on XM that goes, "Wow, that was that would be good for CBS at the seven o'clock hour." People didn't hear that at mm -hmm. seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Let's put that on. That's kind of why I like having one guy, unless yeah. unless he's involved with this show too or listening to it. Yeah. But you know, apparently companies are like, uh, you know, at, at nine o'clock they die at nine o'clock. They die. <laughs> but don't they walk across the street? Yes, they do. They sit in the cafe and drink coffee. They don't do anything else. <laughs> okay, good. That's good. That's healthy. Oh God, it's so fucking. But XM is not not much better. We there hasn't. No. And I were talking about this last night too. There hasn't been anything that has happened. With XM in the last year because of this damn merger. Look, I'm not saying... No new hardware, no new marketing, no new nothing. No, except it, new studio. Yeah. They did give new studio. Yeah, and I'm not saying they're not blithering well, idiots. Yeah, but they owed us that and years they had, ago. And they had been years planning ago. that well before, yeah. Yeah. This is... Uh, the fact of the matter is, yeah, the, the excitement factor in satellite radio is very important. You need that excitement that it's something new. Um, the technology is cutting edge. And the tr f fact of the matter is, there's no new technology coming out because if a merger goes through, they're going to need technology that can work on both platforms sure. somehow. I don't know. Just I don't thinking, know how they're going to do I, this. I, I'm just but. thinking, what a waste of time the last, what? What are they up to, like 14 months? Oh, my like God, that? yeah. What a waste of time. Because what was cool about coming to Satellite in the beginning, it was, it was new, it was exciting, yeah. there was passion, there were people like, all right, this is the new hardware, they really were yeah, into we're, what we're they having were doing. It, we, uh, the press releases that, well, we're announcing this new piece of hardware, don't say anything yet, you guys but are flying it's going to be to great. Vegas. I'm like, flying out to Vegas? The regular radio doesn't uh, just fly out to Vegas yeah. or do this or that. It was really cool, and then 14 months ago, just, you know, the big hand yeah. on the brake. The big sweaty hand on the rusty brake handle. Sparks flying off the wheels. It's a step back to people, take a bunch of steps forward. Well, though. hopefully, yes. that's what you that's well, what you hope for. Yeah, but the thing is, fourteen months of just it being in limbo, uh, being in complete limbo. I, I'm I'm starting to think conspiracy. I told Anthony last night too. Yeah. We had a lot of discussions about radio on our on our walk after our big uh, big corporate event we had yes. last night, and 
I'm thinking the NAB has so much pull, they were able to slow down the merger, allowing, this is my new conspiracy, allowing regular radio to catch up. Because oh, now it's all oh. about the internet, and, and, and uh, they're finally figuring out how to make that work for them. And I think yep. that's all it is about, that the NAB had enough like power to just slow the whole fucking thing down and go to, go to regular radio. Look, this thing is going through, so... We're going to buy you some time, but you got to get your shit together. Yeah. I'm very suspicious. Yeah, get on the uh, cutting edge of the internet technology. Right. Because that seems to be what... Uh, well, that's what CBS, CBS wants to do now. Doing. They want to they make shows like this like internationally popular through the internet. You know, obviously you got the problem with uh, internet in the car still, but cool. not problems with like a website where your show could be available, then you download it and, and listen in your car whenever you want. Yeah, but, uh, you know... I ran out of they are, steam. The, but they're at least you know <laughs> they're at least uh realizing that they gotta they gotta figure out their their shit. Yeah, cool. It's five to nine. Get in the coffin <laughs> <laughs> Can we make uh <laughs> it went up it, it's already passed on instant feedback, but uh it's a great suggestion. Now that we have another executive producer named uh, Stunt Brain that that only cares about the CBS portion of the show. I I, I think it's great that Can we make Steve super duper executive producer? Just so he has a different title. Super, Super duper. duper executive producer, Steve C. I think he'd like that. Yeah. What's, <laughs> what's wrong, Jimmy? Um, well, you know how I feel. Yeah, I like I like I like I, I, all, I, and again I met angry. the guy today. He seems like a nice dude. But I, and he Sun may brain. be very qualified. Mm -hmm. I just the 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 uh, well, bring the Iraq in. Iraq has splitting some it. brain stories. Yeah. He's got stories already? Oh yeah. Go ahead, uh, Jimmy. I'm sorry. Just the pomposity of splitting it like XM is shit and doesn't matter drives me crazy because we do do things over here. And what if there's a guest? This is my bug to me. What if there's a guest that, say, is, is on at 9 o'clock or is scheduled for 8.15 and goes, ah, God damn it, I got something else to do. Hey, can he come in at 9.15? Like, even though that's more Roland's gig, it's almost like anything that would have to bleed into this side, which would be beneficial for the show overall, I'm, won't happen. And that drives me nuts, I'm, and it doesn't have to be that way. Because you care about XM, does not, it's not mutually exclusive. I'm, I'm in full agreement. I think if, I care about if, CBS too. if these two companies really got together and said, look, this is, you know, let's just work on the Opie and Anthony show as a whole, they would both benefit. But they don't understand that concept for some reason. They just don't understand it. No. I, I haven't noticed XM being as as exclusionary, to be honest with you. I have, but again, they run the whole show, so maybe it's different. Maybe I'd feel the, the same way if I ran C if I was in CBS. Yeah. Well, CBS is hours. very, uh, you know, open about how they are with the the situation we're in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dead. Yeah. They're, they're dead. We hate him, and you only work for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rock, what do you know on Stunt Brain? You were telling me a good story that we got to bring up tomorrow on the show, but. Um, in the early '90s, I I saw. This is gonna drive Jimmy nuts, by the way. I saw. <laughs> the only reason I'm doing this, I gotta I gotta play my hand. I saw Stump Brain um, <laughs> at an event with uh, Gordon Elliott, who used to do Good Day New York. Sure, mm -hmm. with the English accent. Yeah. Yep. Um, him and Gordon were at a supermarket doing turkey bowling, live on the radio and on Good Day New York. Turkey bowling. Yeah. That's where you take the frozen turkey. And you have bowling pins, and, and you slide it across the they, floor. They had canned goods set up at the end of a of Canned an aisle. goods. And was this for a um, uh, giveaway for, like, the poor? You I, I don't remember turkey what Turkey bowling it, for the poor? I don't remember what it was for, but I, during the CBS show, it dawned on me that I, this, I remembered seeing this. Um, but they had uh, a whole box of turkeys that they were, they were just throwing out and then inviting people in <sighs> off the street to come in and also bowl in the supermarket. Of course. Um, you know, who knows? Look, early, <laughs> early 90s, it might be, you know, again, if you do something 15 years ago, no, 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 but you do something X amount of years ago, you know. Uh, well, yeah, I think know. we did bra, uh, the bra bombing like 12 yeah. years ago, so. All right, I, I okay, guess. all right. All right, so maybe you gotta cut the guy a little a slack, then, People I guess. move on. Yeah. He seemed nice enough, so. Uh, the police have a major announcement at Times Square today with Mayor Bloomberg at one. Keith Williamson from Delaware. What's that about? Is that real? What, what is that? What would be the major announcement at Times Square? Is Leave the city tomorrow. Cutting, yeah, they're 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 well, closing the city down. Well, Reverend Al's doing his uh, praying tomorrow, and he's and uh, and he's hinting that a lot of people are going to get arrested. So maybe uh, Bloomberg is like, you know what? Maybe there'll be some violence. Yeah. Can I say those three faces out there? Say it all. 
<laughs> Why? Why? They're laughing now. I've seen happier people in that coma documentary. <laughs> Don't, blame Don't start them. looking at the audience out there and crying, Jimmy. I can't help it. <laughs> just say something. They look happy. They look fun. Know, they just look, look at very, that. Uh, we, just, we just need this merger to go through. Do we have anything planned for today? Let's let's fucking get something planned here. Well, we, I, I, no, I, I, no, we don't yes. because Super Duper Executive Super Producer, Duper Executive Producer <laughs> is meeting with Stunt Brain right now. That's cool. Super Duper Even loves th- it in the pooper. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymed. Steve Steve goes uh, after the CBS show. I'm gonna I'm gonna lag behind and uh, and talk to Stunt Brain. I'm like, okay, you How do you that. How about you talk to Stunt Brain at eleven? Yeah. Well, no, but you know. <laughs> He's already been brainwashed at the CBS. <laughs> it's more important. Of course. <laughs> uh, the guys, they went home. It's 9 o'clock, don't you know? They die at 9 o'clock. They go to bed and they wake up and come here. <laughs> that's why That's why they're, That's why. why I'm here. I could spend time with you because the XM portion of the show is not important when you're the executive producer <laughs> of the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> I just want to kill myself. I, Jimmy, I used to be like you, but now I just... I some, Somewhere along the line... Along the, along the way i i just drank the kool-aid i just said you know what i can't i'm gonna have an aneurysm if i yeah i, I, I continue being pissed off at all the but crap i'm, that I'm not even angry so it's a little laughable to me i don't get it <laughs> it that's is why laughable i don't get it and that's how you executive produce <laughs> yes <laughs> what's what you get jimmy let's get it to this first i, I don't get second. the thinking that's well i don't get it like, I, don't, I don't i'll i'll start i don't get that steve c decided it was more important to go talk to stunt brain than continue producing the show yeah, stupid thing. What happened? I had a Steve clip, and it just says hot key not. Yeah, well. Hot key not assigned. I lost my <laughs> Steve clip. Yeah. People don't. Bill K., who's a regular, doesn't know who Stunt Brain is. He's the latest producer that has been hired for the show. <laughs> for I've CBS. Lost, I've lost track, yeah. Yes, for the first three hours. For the first uh, uh, 60% of the show, <laughs> we have one guy. And for the second, the 40% of the show. We have Steve. But Steve's supposed to be the other side, too. Oh, is he? So Steve's like 100%. Oh, I didn't realize Steve's that. Steve's still 100%. I didn't know that. In but name now he has only? to compete against Stunt Brain now. Okay, I don't know. I, I, no one's told me, because nobody over there would ever tell me anything. So I, I have no idea what's going <laughs> to hate my guts. And please, I don't know that. I, I don't know what's going on. Oh, God. <laughs> they don't hate your guts. They do. It's okay. Me. I don't take it personally. They, they don't hate your guts. The people that I think didn't... Like, like you, whatever, long gone. I think they're gone. But then some yeah. of those guys that didn't like you then decided that 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 they didn't like me now, but they now like you. Yes. It's, it's just it's just ridiculous. This whole business. It's just that's silly. why it just makes me laugh now. It's just silly. Cock uh, meat. Nothing but cock meat. Where's that's our executive producer? Can we get Steve on the phone? I want to see how his stunt brain. Uh, uh, well, no, I'm just explaining going. to him that, like, while he's trying to say something, I'll be scrolling and going, okay, let me check. What, is, what could they possibly be discussing right now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't want to interrupt. Please interrupt him Please and interrupt. get him on the phone interrupt immediately. Him. Call him on the hotline so we can get him right on. Hello? Hello? Yeah, no, I'm coming soon. <laughs> Travis, what's going on? Wow. I'm just trying my damnedest to call Steve, but he hung up on me the first time, and now he's not answering his How phone. How about we tell... Oh, okay, that would actually no, help good. the show. Doesn't Why would he, he do it? Yeah, uh, of course. Cool. <laughs> right. He's probably <laughs> At the very, very least, meeting. he's got to think, all right, they're calling me. They're trying to make good radio. Get him on the fucking phone. Well, I'm doing my best. I'll text. That's how you executive I love, I love the shirt, by the way, Travis. Uh, it's it's Jimmy's shirt day. You know, shirts that uh, Jim, Jim's mom gave Jim that Jim decided not to wear. Oh, the, the I staff, wore it. The staff is wearing today, <laughs> and they're wearing them proudly. Oh, I wore it. We've got to get a group photo of the guys uh, in your shirts today. Uh, <laughs> we should have them take those shirts off at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leave those shirts here. <laughs> Where's Steve? You know what, Jimmy? You, you nailed it, though. In their minds... It, the show just ends at nine o'clock. But I, I, I feel it like, completely yeah, ends this at has, nine. This they don't even care what we do here. What's up, Sam? But it drives me nuts. We didn't even get suspended over there when we screwed up over here. Which yeah, I, I do love them for that. I do love the fact they stuck with us during that shit. Or you guys, they stuck. No, with I just think it's season. because they didn't uh, care. Like they just don't care. Yeah. That we, you know, that we were on the air. Yeah. Because they don't acknowledge it. Like you said, nine o'clock, we're dead. So it doesn't matter what we do here. We could kill someone in here and still have a show over there. 
I just called Steve on my cell phone, and he did pick up, but he said he's outside walking with Stump Brain, so he he won't come on the air, but he'll be here in a little while. Why can't he talk outside on the air? And it, he's he, walking over with Stump Brain. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> when are they gonna be here? We got to get him on the air immediately. He said oh, he said he's walking now, so. Well, no, we were just discussing why a man of my size wears a medium shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the beauty of this, we have probably 15 people that now work for us. At 940, the main guy yes. is still not over here for the XM portion of the show. Because he had to talk to Stunt Brain. It's going to be funny when Steve comes stunt up brain. and Stunt Brain can't walk in the building. It's like a vampire trying to enter a church. <laughs> He'll keep trying to walk in and keep bouncing backwards. You're not allowed in here. Yeah, I can't. I, what's, what's happening in that? He won't even know the building's here. Oh, my God. All right, it goes 113, uh, 109. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, should we take a break? And, I have to tinkle big and, time, and GH. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, I, but no, I, you have some go-to stuff for the. I can't help myself, and I, I see Jimmy's annoyed. I try to put it in even... because it's so much fun for me. Because I lived it for so long, and I can't be bothered anymore. I just can't. And God bless that you are, Jimmy, because we do need someone that's going to fight the good fight. But I honestly... I th it just makes me laugh how ridiculous it is. The companies work together. Like, I want the companies to work together. I'm happy to be doing both. I really am. You talk to a lot more people on regular... See, I do what like they don't understand it. either is, like, let's say CBS has guests and... and um, and maybe ideas that we can't do on CBS, but they help us hear exactly. Now, like you said earlier, you don't think now the next CBS portion of the show, we're not going to discuss what happened on XM. That, like, we just did, we did a pretty good uh, first break today just talking about our dumb corporate event. Yeah. You know what I mean? So some of that other stuff that happens over here that CBS helped us with, we would bring over there and make good radio. Well, let's say but we they just... don't understand that concept. No, we, we, it's a five-hour show. And I would like to have it viewed as, as a five-hour five hour show. show, not two separate ones. Well, I mean, except even for the, it, it except a, for the twenty-minute walk and the times we do leave a little early. But yeah, in general, it's a yeah. five-hour show. You know? Yeah, but, those times. <laughs> yeah, but with commercials, we're not talking then either. So I mean, it's you know what I mean. It's like on, on TBS, the commercials you don't talk it here. Yeah. We're walking and leaving together. No, no, it's funny too. Like a lot of these listeners that you know bitch and complain because we leave early or we do this or that. They don't even understand. And this is what makes me laugh, and it really does. We have no bosses at XM officially. We don't. We could probably blow off the XM portion of the show. I would, I, and I'm not even kidding. Every day. No, I'm not even kidding. We could probably go two weeks before someone would even notice. <laughs> And go, guys, what's up? You haven't done an XM show in a while. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. We're just going through some stuff. We'll do one tomorrow. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we're, sh we're showing uh, extreme uh, discipline that we even show up here anymore. <laughs> extreme discipline. I'm not Dude, am I wrong? No, you're, you're I, not. I can't get Logan on the phone for the life of me anymore. I want the merger to go through. I didn't at first. I was nervous about it, but I, I want it to happen. In the end, I think it's a great thing. I absolutely I really do. a great thing. But what, what I'm frustrated about is the fact that... Um, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, it's taken so goddamn long, and I just imagine all the great things that could have been accomplished instead of just stopping business and waiting for the merger to go through. Of all of the, because uh, I'm host of the HBO thing, all, like, we, the way it's, it's like a younger comics, kind of, and then like one like headliner on each show. Mm -hmm. Headliner's only doing like eight, ten minutes, a 30 minute show. The fucking first comic to call me back that I called fucking Artie Lang. Nice. I want the merger to go through. I'm tired of the fucking fighting with Sirius and the bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. Fucking all, my friends work there. Their friends work here. It's fucking. You think I don't want to hang out with Jim Brewer or Corey Alley? I know. Yeah. Fucking have Florentine on. It drives me nuts. Fart. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you too. Um, the other day I ran into um, Fred Norris at a uh, supermarket, and it was like all the years of infighting between the two shows. I, I look. I'm like, I think that's Fred Norris. I was I was with my girl, and all of a sudden. He looks up, he goes, hey! And he goes, congratulations on uh, on the engagement and congratulations on the new deal you guys signed with CPS. I'm like, thanks, hey, man. Thanks. And I go, don't you live? And I kind of mentioned where he might be living. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll see you around. It was like, it couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. I've seen him around I think, there, too. I think the listeners expect that. Like, just a brawl all, all the time. Like, we just start strangling each other in the, the same supermarket. Thing with a poker game. Yeah. Uh, with Howard. With Howard. Where, like, people expect that I was just going to.
E Rock's got something. Well, All right, E Rock. He just called. And he won't come on the phone, but he said he'll he'll be there in a minute. He's almost at the building. What, what is he fucking <laughs> looking? How, how did he go? I'm he almost me. there. How, how did he loop down Seventh Avenue and he fucking made a right on Forty Second and came back up Eighth? I don't know, but he he called to tell me he's like I'm not coming on the air, but I'm almost at the building. Why won't he come on the air? <laughs> because I'm not here yet. <laughs> I'm not the executive producer till I walk and, through the door. And you door. know how we just explained how we have extreme discipline? Hold Steve on. doesn't. He knows he could get away with this, so yeah. he does. And, off the and subject. God bless him, because we're all like that. <laughs> Eric knows. <laughs> well, off, <laughs> off the subject. Now, I'm not making fun of Eric. Oh, okay. But yeah, I have to say, in that shirt, you look like like uh, like a, 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 a fucking saran wrap over mashed potatoes on the plate oh, sideways. Come on. He's, he's trying. He's trying, Jimmy. <laughs> what does Eric know, by the way? Oh, he just knew Jim was gearing up for a smash. Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> Off the subject. <laughs> what could it possibly? If have only been? that was a saran wrap shirt, that would have been a home run. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Hey, Steve. Hi, I'm the executive producer We're, now. So how come we you got, both didn't come up? Hold on, we got Wait, you. What? Why didn't you both come up? Is Stunt Brain here? No. No, why would <laughs> no, Let's go to the shows. How come we didn't come up and say hello? Did you guys want him to come up? Nobody told me this. Because well, you wouldn't answer the phone. We were trying to get you on the phone. <laughs> I was talking to him. So what? What's more important? On the air, we're talking to him. Actually, right now, talking to him no, is it's very not. important. Why is it very important? Because i got to find out exactly what his role is in this whole thing, and he doesn't even know, so that's... Uh... The alpha male. Who fucking puts on the glasses and walks away? Why did he come up and say hello? Yeah, did you? I, I didn't know. No one does he want to acknowledge that there's another portion of the opening anthem? No, no, show? It's, it's a whole fucking thing's a clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is a clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah, no, he does. He 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 does actually, and I'm sure he uh, would have. And I'm sitting, and I actually would have liked the response to one of my text messages when I asked somebody, "What's going on? What's well, the problem?" Well, Travis called you and he said you hung up on him. You wouldn't come yeah. on the air. No, Sam I said you wouldn't come, come on the air. Why wouldn't you? Excuse me. I didn't hang up on oh, anybody. Oh. Why wouldn't you talk to Stunt Brain after the Opie and Anthony show officially ends? Not when CBS thinks the show ends. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not what you said in your email last night when I told you I was doing it. Shh. Oh, I said, yeah, sorry. whatever. <laughs> I did say sh whatever. <laughs> that is a uh, good point. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, but, uh, Steve, uh, one of the listeners, I, I can't give him credit because uh, I don't know which feedback it was anymore, but you're now the super duper executive producer. Super duper executive of, of producer. It's show. a brand new title. Because oh, I hear they're giving him like an executive with? producer title. Yeah, that he's got show. he's got an executive producer title now. So oh, good. So, <laughs> so now we're making you the super duper executive producer. Oh, can I get that on a business card? <laughs> <Jimmy's> Jim, <laughs> at least Jimmy's happy with the situation. Yeah, Jimmy has like, no problem. Jimmy seems with very it. frustrated right well, now. No, no, no that's happiness. Be, man? It's not not with you, but it's in general. It's a fucking clusterfuck. It drives me nuts. And that's how you executive <laughs> <laughs> no. I have a feeling that they brought him, one of the reasons they brought yeah, him No, on. I don't, not even knocking him. I, I met him once and I liked him. So it's he's, not a, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's got a lot of, he's got he a lot of time brilliant. in this business. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm not saying he's not qualified, Wait, or, what's or he's your, not the right guy. What's your, why are you thinking they brought him on? No accountability, because we all work for XM. So they can tell us to do something, but... Yeah, but um, we're, we've been pretty good. No, I think we've been... But with him, they, they, because he works for them. Right. I have a feeling that's one of the reasons. But who that... is? No one's told CBS to go fuck them. We listen to them. They of course we do. Bitch slap us. We listen. Yeah. You guys listen. <laughs> it's our job. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what did you guys discuss? Um, I asked him if if he got a good idea of what goes on around here. He was asking me if uh, if we did certain things. If we cut up the audio uh, uh, before the show. If you guys listened to the audio clips before you played them, or you just relied on the uh, the rest of the crew. To tell you what the certain stories were about, he's already questioning the uh, rest of the crew. Yeah, we we don't listen to most of those clips ahead of time. These guys have honed their skills, and um, and it means less time that we have to worry <laughs> and put in. Uh, we talked about a few ways to um, uh, streamline turkey bowling. Ooh, yes, turkey bowling. <laughs> yes. turkey Eric bowl. made sure that he let uh, he he let Stunt Brain know that uh, turkey bowling was in his past. Oh, really? Yeah, we have audio of that. Let's try YouTube. Maybe you can find Gordon Elliott turkey bowling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? Uh, you know what the stunt brain means. You know why? Did did we ever explain no, where stunt us. brain came from? Please tell me it was from Dallas in 1962. <laughs> yeah. That's the right year. <laughs> See, Anthony's Anthony's a sick fuck too. Because the only reason he's going to explain this is to get under Jimmy's skin. <laughs> you have joined me. <laughs> I don't know if it'll bother me. Uh, it probably won't. I, I, don't, I don't, know. don't think it will, Jimmy. See, he's got this whole thing. That he is the stunt brain. Now, w when do you call in the stunt man? 
when the talent, the actor, is doing something and then ha has to do something like above and beyond. Sure. Now you pull the actor and put in the stuntman. Right. He considers himself like when we're doing our show and we need something, you know, that we can't really come up with in our brains. He acts like the stunt brain. The stunt brain can jump in at a moment's notice and take over and, you know, just kind of get the ideas. And, you know, he's like, uh, the listeners are shaking their heads. It's the stunt the brain. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be that. And, Jimmy, it's copywritten, and uh, he does have a hat that I guess he wasn't brave enough to wear today that says Stunt Brain. Stunt Brain, and uh, his cards say Stunt Brain, and he's got StuntBrain.com, uh, I believe. Yeah. And he's, uh, like, building a whole thing. Thank you, uh, Why would you oh, protect something? Uh, uh, again, uh, 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 he's got a whole thing with Stunt Brain. He's protecting something that nobody would steal. <laughs> who, who would take Stunt Brain? What would you use it for? <laughs> it's got to be, it means something else. No, it's no. The, I I I'd like I to know, say it does. If the you have explanation there, you know. just gave me, yeah, it made my stomach hurt. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I love telling Jimmy things like that. I think he also likes to be called Coach Mike. Coach Mike. I really? That was he's riding around the school in his van? Who calls him <laughs> Coach Mike? I don't know if he likes to be called Coach Mike. I think at one point uh, Frankie Blue used to call him Coach Mike. Uh, you mean? The, the guy that was drunk on the air, Frankie Blue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that one. What? Wow. Dan is laughing at Stunt Brain's website. Yes, Dan. Oh, no. <laughs> it is his official website. Uh, no, I'm just getting into it right now. Let's see what the photos have. All right. <clears throat> why, why didn't Stunt Brain come up today? To he watch. People, he, come up to I, watch. Why would he come up here? <laughs> Doesn't exist. That's what I say. Why don't you walk into thin air? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Come up to where? Where are they? Playing the piano in the Steinway building? We don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good take on uh, things, Jimmy. That's for just, sure. But it's just, you know. And then, like, then the two companies won't even work with us, so we have to leave there to come here because they don't want to acknowledge each other. And then after we're done here, we have to go back there for meetings. Like, they can't even bring their people over here to meet, so we don't have to walk now back to where we just were <laughs> and wait on another elevator bank, go upstairs to meet in a conference room. Sorry, just looking for a USB port. What are you doing? doing? Oh, your iPhone? I, my phone oh. is dead. So it's you, totally dead. Yeah, and you can't survive without uh, your iPhone. No! I can't. Can I, t can I Man, make sure those USB ports are Can I, can I tinkle? I don't know where you are. Why, is. Jimmy? I have to pee. He's looking for a fucking USB port. Okay. Just walk in the room. I gotta piss. <laughs> Oh, why are we enjoying gonna... all of it with a cold egg sandwich in front of you, wrapped in tinfoil? Oh, we were going to take a break. Actually. That's right. All right, we'll take a break. <laughs> and we're going to do some uh, some radio after this. Yes. Break, right? That's right. right. We start right at the fucking crack of 9.58. <laughs> <laughs> now that Steve has decided to join us. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Footer, what's up, Footer? Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. Yeah, I'm listening to Anthony describe to Jimmy about this fucking where he came up with his name. Yeah. I legitimately am getting physically ill. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm fucking shaking in my car. I don't. I don't even know this guy. I want. I want to strangle him. I was more comfortable when, like, when he was describing Hillary's fucking stay in the kitchen speech. It was easier to listen to. I'm gonna talk to Stunt Brain. I guarantee you that doesn't not what I mean. It's a joke. Because he seems like a good dude. I mean, it was oh, yeah. a very brief. Yeah. He came over and introduced himself, and mm -hmm. I, yeah. I liked him. Well, yeah. I just don't believe that that's the truth. And he does not have a hat that says Stunt Brain. Well, why don't we get him on yeah. the phone? Yeah, there's. Can we call him up and, and get him on? Or, why? It'd be like saying Stunt Brain. Why don't you just call no one? <laughs> I like why would he make want to talk to us? Physically ill. He's just going to think he's talking to, uh, to us at home. That's all. Of course he, he is. <laughs> Nine o'clock. How are you, boys? What are you doing? Kicking your feet up at home? <laughs> XM, what's that, a shirt size? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you're 100% right, but, you know. Oh. <laughs> this is under the clips I like section. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what is this? That is the thing me and Than have goofed on for months. Clips. The skateboarding dog. It's my boy Tillman. Who's Tillman? Tillman's the skateboarding the do dog. The skateboarding dog. Look at him chew it. He doesn't know what he's Who doing. No, is he's this? crazy. That's stunt this print. 
This is his site? <laughs> and he likes the fucking bulldog on the skateboard? Yes. Yeah, this is it's adorable, though. Look. It's not adorable. He's, not, he's doing it all himself. I don't look. want to see it unless it's from Michael Vick's house. Then I want to see dog footage. <laughs> look, it's adorable. Look, Jimmy. He pushes he's himself and everything. Look at him. Go. No deal. He gets on it. Look, he pushes the skateboard, jumps on, and there he goes. You know what else he'll do? Lick I, peanut look. butter off your balls and asshole. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> let's, let's see. Let's see Dexter do this fucking thing. Yeah, really. Dexter is shit. I mean, of course that. he is. Of course he be, is. But, but just because Dexter is fucking pointy-eared, bat, bat-eared shit doesn't mean that this is fucking entertaining. What other clips are there under clips I, I like? There better be a... Oh. Uh, Brian Collins from Jersey. Horse gag. <laughs> the only one. <laughs> Horse gag. That's the only clip wow. under clips I like. Take off that S. It's clip I like. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? How about clips I like? That's something I can get into. <laughs> but fucking... He'll, he'll fit in perfect with his show if he only has one clip in the clip section. <laughs> Because uh, we, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Oh, uh, Stuntbrain.com has clips. I like the amazing. Oh, he's talking to Sharpton. Yeah. I like that. What? Go, go down a little bit. Let's see what he said to Sharpton. What? What? Well, that's uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, 20, mm -hmm. A few samples of some of the improvised voice work that I've done. Oh, he does impressions. Oh boy. Uh -oh. Let's hear it. Now, now I might be screwed out of the job. Would, hold on. Why would we have Stunt Brain audio for the first day he's working with us? That would be crazy. Yeah, and who'd want that? Yeah, who would want to do that on XM? Get that stat. Yeah, get his get his audio. Let's go. Let's fry this fucker. That <laughs> <laughs> should be really good, though. Is that what he did? Yeah, I don't... I think it's just an audio file. Can we play it? Hit play, my love. Uh, Once you notice one... President's birthday. How old is the president, Michelle? He is 52 years old today. And the president? 52 wow. years old. Mm. Oh, my, my girlfriend is friends with the housekeeper of Ruth. Martha's Vineyard, the, the, the house where he stays. You're Ruth. kidding. Yeah, the presidential that? vacation house? Right. He's Ruth. got four housekeepers. He's got four housekeepers that right. take care of him, and, of Ruth. course, a load full of security. Mm. But one of the uh, housekeepers, her name is Ruth G Goldway, and a good friend of my girlfriend's. You're kidding. Yeah. Call her up. Perfect. You want to call her? Yeah, come on. Oh, come on. All right, hold on. Come on, you're crazy. If she says no, because all the wire, it's all tapped. Uh -huh. This is tapped? Yeah, when she says no, why you can't... She's going to know why I'm calling, first of all. Hold on, don't say anything. Good morning. Hi, Ruth? Yes? It's Sean, honey. Hi, Sean, how are you? Good, 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 Great. good. How you, you, you got the man out there, huh? Oh, yeah. Is it busy? Yes, it is pretty busy. Yeah, uh, a lot of security, a lot of, I guess, secret service everywhere? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So how's everything going with you? Everything's okay. Hey, listen, um, you're on the radio right now. No, I don't think so. Well, it's... <laughs> Come on, Ruth, go get the president. Come on. I'm sorry, Sean, but I can't. It's his birthday. It's his birthday today. I'm sorry, Sean, I can't do that. We've talked about this before. Ruth, Ruth I need the phone. Would you please clear the line? Give oh, it, see, that's him right there. There he is. There he, let me talk to the president. Sean, I'm sorry. No, it's his what is this? Roger. Unlistenable. <laughs> I need the phone now. Let me talk to him, uh, Ruth. Mr. Oh. President, it's Hollywood and Goomba. There are a couple of DJs. Uh, I know who they are. Tell, tell them thank you very much for the birthday gift. A box of condoms. Very funny. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Could you clear the line, please? Sean, I'm sorry, but the president wants me to clear the line. Uh, can I ask you gentlemen to please clear this line? It's of national security interest. Why? Oh, I need to talk to my brother. We're playing golf this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, good morning, KTO. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Um, I had an experience with a UFO. Hold on, don't go anywhere. I'll be right with you, okay? All right. This sounds guy's like, a nut. Sounds like a oh, no, this guy, we're going to have fun with this guy. Sounds, sounds like he had an experience yeah. with a bottle of Johnny Walker. Yeah, I know. Hi, good morning, you're on the air. Oh, my God. Uh, hello. Yes. That was nine that years was ago. Spoon feed the audience. Oh, All right. right, you're gonna hear a nut now. <laughs> this guy's gonna be great. I love this guy already. You there? Nine years ago, off off Montauk, I'm in a shark fishing tournament. It's four o'clock in the morning, and we're about a mile off Montauk Point, and a bright light comes out of nowhere. It sounds like Goomba. I thought it was a lighthouse. No, this is next thing I know, I'm getting. Sucked up off the boat. Stunt brain. Stunt brain was playing crazy caller. I got three hours. And he was also Mr. Clinton. John. <laughs> yeah. Stop laughing, John. <laughs> you can't expect the listener to call when you're gonna you're gonna laugh at him on the air. Honestly, God. All right. Me. So you're a fisherman, sir, and you're off Montauk, and you were sucked. You were actually in the. 
Do you want to just scan forward a little bit? How? Well, no, I missed the and, final and finality. We both yeah, that's up, exactly he it. Yes. Remember any. <laughs> he does a Hank Hill. That's. I'm gonna try to find that. Oh yeah. I'm just scrolling here, so I don't know. Scroll, scroll. scroll. That's my job. <laughs> and can I say this? And you're calling from oh. where? Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah. Goomba Johnny, I have to say this. Uh -huh. You wrote a book, uh -huh. and I fucking love it. What, what was yeah. it about? If you so you want to be in the mafia or something like that. It's about mafia families. You're like, yeah, it's gonna be hokey. It's funny and it's really like interesting about the mafia. It's it's fucking he's great. Crazy to write about that. He's it's using real money. names. It's insane. But he goofs on it too. But he also then this stuff where it's like he just really talks about the mob. Right. It's fucking. I can't stop reading this oh, that's goddamn great. book. I'm that's, really happy for him. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, it's great. Uh, proving your point, um, Jimmy. Uh, I got an email from uh, Chris Olivero, who we love. We do love this guy. Yeah. Uh, of good. course, he waited to email me because he assumes, like Jimmy was saying all morning, that the show is now officially yeah. over, so I have time to read my email. Sure, not a Yeah, yeah, just, just email you. He sent this at 9.30, so it's like, okay, well, I'll give the boys a half hour and yeah. after the show to kind of wind down. Wind and, down, and then I'll, and I'll email him. He writes, Ode, thanks again for taking the time out last night to join <laughs> us for the debut of the CBS Radio Digital Network. We all appreciate it greatly. Just as important, it gave us a chance to showcase you both to an elite group of advertisers and buyers and drive home the fact that CBS is thrilled to be continuing in the own a business. Hope you guys enjoy it as well. Chris, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll give him a little time to wind down from right. the show. Right. Show's over. Uh, I didn't recommend Baby Mama. What? Joe in Vegas. Opie, I just would like some acknowledgement today. I just want to say fuck you for the movie recommendation, Baby Mama, faggot. I had a choice between Iron Man and that piece of shit. I'd tell my girl, oh, Opie said it was good. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you say that I, day? I said I went, and I said it's a, one of those, I think I said pretty much it was one of those movies, no harm, really. It's, it, you it's, said it's, best it's, movie of the year, I no, think. No, my God. <laughs> Something like that. Be movie of the year, best movie of the year, Oscar worthy. You said I laughed, I cried. It had everything. I put a tampon in. That's right. <laughs> I laughed, I cried, I shat in the mouth of an invalid. And Joe, come on. <laughs> the, the, hype, the, hype, the hype from Iron Man, you, you ignored all that because of a throwaway comment I, I said about baby mom. Yeah. It's your own life. I said it was funny, but it's, it's, it's just there. You know, it's, it's, I went with my chick. Yeah. A man's arms were pinned in machinery. Oh. Amazingly, he managed to dial 911 on his cell phone with his toes. Uh, why is that amazing? Because most yeah. people have on shoes and would dial nine pound, <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> why is that amazing? It might not have been the first uh, attempt either. Absolutely. He might have called a few other people first, checked his messages. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And the motherfucker sent a text message. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Coke Logic is promoting onaradio.com. Is that a good site? I, I, I see like fan sites popping up that are just want, yeah. want to talk That's about the nice. show, and then they'll eventually go yeah, bad. eventually turn to shit and oh, go I bad. Don't know. Just, well, Coke this Logic. golf cart chase is really hysterical. I know. What happened, Dan? I don't know. It's in Vegas. That's all I know. Suspect suspect <laughs> makes off in golf cart. Oh boy, he didn't get too far on the floor, did he? <laughs> he just there fell he is, over. laying in rocks. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, that well, that's never down. good. Oh, oh. He should have hidden a tree. <laughs> Police never would have found him in a tree. In a good old tree. Hang up on a tree, pretend you're an apple. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> on with his toes. NBC 15's Jenna Susco is live in Pensacola, where the man is recovering at a local hospital. And Jenna, rescue workers say it may have ended much differently if he didn't think on his feet. Yeah, that's right. See? Oh, God. He this guy's thinking a heel. on his feet. This See? Guy's a heel. <laughs> See? <laughs> but he had to arch from one part of the story to well, the next. Well, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. Oh, this little piggy went to market. Get it? <laughs> if he didn't think on his feet. Yeah. yeah, that's right, Greg. He would have been stuck for at least See. several more hours. An ambulance or a tow truck. Ah, wow. <laughs> debate footage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whoa, hey, so, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 Paula. Um, so sorry, uh, guys. Whoa, thank God we got a delay. They can't figure it out if they uh, start flipping channels. No, at sorry. least several more hours waiting for the morning crews to arrive. Now what? Am I tired? ONARadio.com is K-Rock, Opie. Home of the show rundown. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Jesus. Yeah, you kind of said, <laughs> wow. We you don't know. That was a shit-talking site. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. fuck, fuck them. All right, listen. <laughs> we had a corporate event last night we had to deal with. Wow. Waiting for the morning crews to arrive. Now, officials can't release his name to us, but they do tell us doctors were able Why? to save both of his arms, all because he was able to dial his cell phone using his feet. What mm. kind of machine was it? Yeah, they don't even go into detail. The call came from inside DRS Technologies at 2 a.m. Thursday morning. I'm calling from my cell phone. I'm stuck in a piece of machinery. I'm the only one in the building. I would have said, what's a cell phone? <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Just really fucking the guy. Like, what? You calling from your cell phone? I'm stuck in that? a piece of machinery. Well, he got the message out quick. He didn't bullshit. No. <laughs> Good thing he doesn't have a fucking iPhone. Hello? <laughs> Hello? 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 Call failed. Hello? 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 Oh, look! Little finger! Ha! 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 Move your finger lightly along the glass. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole Steve Jobs. Can I take a picture of my cock and send it? No! Send it to a little website, and it comes up the size of a postage stamp. <laughs> Thank God, I bet you this guy at Verizon. Wait, you can't email pictures with the iPhone, right? No, you can email them, but you can't just like text them. Yeah. Let's say I took oh, a picture. that's what I meant. Like, no, you can't send me a picture that way right now. No, I, didn't know I that. get a Not thing through text. Says, no, it says you have a message. You I thought to you got the Blackbird. Oh, you have to I go to the fucking viewmymessage.com. It fucking and you can yeah. see it the size of a postage stamp. Yeah, it's awful. And then what happens? And then what happens? Then you click mm. on it, and then you No, it doesn't it. get bigger when you click on it. Yeah. No. All right, back to the it's story. It's shit. I got to hear uh, Cell Flown again. Morning. I'm calling from my cell phone. I'm <laughs> stuck in a piece of machinery. I'm the only one in the building. Okay, what are you stuck in? What type of machinery? Like I'm it matters. my arms. So I can't get out. How about the address, asshole? How are you calling me? <laughs> How are you calling me? Oh, my God. This guy is just like, look, just send someone. Maybe someone was there and dialed the phone for him, you idiot. How Come are along. you calling me? You're full of shit. How are you calling me? I'm calling you on my cell phone. Okay, but you're pinned? I am pinned, right. He had to move his hip to knock his phone off of his belt and then remove his shoes with his feet and dial 911 with his toes. Very smart. Yeah. Good luck with the iPhone. You'd have to fucking put your big toe on that little arrow and try to scoop it to the left. <laughs> scoop it with your toe. <laughs> your, your toes have to dance lightly along the glass. Uh, uh, we got more of the 911 call. It was his only option. His arms were being crushed by a press-like machine, and no one would be in until the morning. So are we going to be able to get in the building? I don't know. They're on the way right now, okay? With his arms pinned, he was able to tell Cruz how to find him. Here! I'm over here! <laughs> <laughs> this is great. What a good, a good plan. <laughs> it's not like his fucking larynx was pinned. <laughs> I'm over here! Yeah, how would that have helped if his arms weren't pinned? He would have waved and they would have heard it? Well, that would have been funny if one of the rescue workers said, Where? Le where? Wave, wave your hand. I can't see you. I can't. They're in the machine. Stop ironing your arms, sir. There's a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fucking pressure this asshole caught in? I don't know. Here. I'm over here. Do you hear him? Yeah. I'm here. They were able to go outside of the facility and shut down a compressor that controlled the unit. And by doing that, they could take a Halligan pry bar that we have on the trucks, lift the press unit up to free his arms, secure it in place, and extricate the patient. It's amazing. He's a lucky man. Smart man. We did contact DRS Technologies for comment about how the accident happened. They told me it's still under investigation. But guys, you know what? This really is truly an amazing story. I was looking at my phone. And I'm guessing that it probably wasn't a flip phone. But if it was, I'm sure he probably could have figured that out probably. also. With Why don't you just phone? look at his phone, stupid? Why right. speculate? He's not in the ocean, dead. Why are you speculating? Fucking asshole. Stupid How did he get course. his hands they're, caught in the fucking... They're the same in I every know. city, in was, every town. He said, you're terminated, fucker. And the machine came out <laughs> on his arms. <laughs> You're trying to clip his nails with a fucking meat grinder. <laughs> what a douche. Steven S. from Bayshore writes, Rumor has it the guy was actually trapped in the foundrymusic.com website. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was shaving my arms and a machine fell on them. <laughs> because they're very hairy. <laughs> Get it? Yes. And that's how you dial a phone with your feet. <laughs> That's right. I have 
I have another meeting with Stunt Brain. Yes, let me call Stunt Brain and see what he would do in this situation. Would I rather talk to Stunt Brain or stick both arms in this machine? (laughs) I'm over here. I'm over here. It's Stunt Arms. (laughs) I got my arms stuck in a in in a in a uh, a press in a Uh, fucking in in a yeah. uh, I said I'm tired in a fucking where they get the fucking honey. Oh, fucking bear in a tree. beehive. Thank beehive. you. What the fuck's wrong with me? Help me. Yes. I'm stuck in a beehive. Right. I'm That's dialing with my rear claws, and I just <laughs> shit on my phone. Yes, and it's caught in my ass hair. <laughs> it's old printer press arms. I was trying to print a newspaper on my hands and arms. <laughs> <laughs> Distribution oh. one. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dicky punchcock. <laughs> yeah, another line name. that I didn't get to use, but this one from Whackbag, uh, uh, he writes, smart man. If he was smart, he wouldn't have tried to get a manicure from a meat grinder. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. Yeah. Oh, you did? Clipping his nails with a meat grinder. Oh, I didn't hear you, Dan. That happens. If he happens. was fucking smart, he wouldn't have tried that's to paint his nails with a meat grinder. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> so that's funny. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Why does it all go back to Steve? I don't know why. Yes. We're obsessed with him. John from Virginia. I I got to work on my Steve voice because I really want to be part of this. Yes. With you guys. He writes them. Just sound like an ass. My, my arms are stuck in my Prius and it's flying away. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. I'm over here. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize it said press. I thought it said Prius. A printing Prius. <laughs> I was going to take a photo of the car. Please, just look where nobody's working. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to upload something and my arms got crushed. <laughs> uh, get me stunt brain. <laughs> get me stunt brain on the phone. I was catnapping and the machine turned on. <laughs> what a fool. I was trying to fax myself to XM to get there quicker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I suck. Danny, do his, do you do the voice? Let's go. Yes, have fun. What the fuck? See, my my arms were stuck in the goat sea man. <laughs> you know that, the picture of that guy with his asshole open, ridiculously large. Oh, that's, <laughs> the oh, there you go. that's the goat sea man. Okay. That's the goat sea I, didn't know, I didn't know his name. I didn't know the fuck. I didn't know this guy had a name. Goat sea man. <laughs> Help, I'm stuck. Bob Kelly rolled over on my arms. <laughs> He's got the shits, yes. and I can't get him off That's of me. Right. It looks like the waterfall in Willy Wonka's factory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really queer. I'm really queer. Wow. I mean, I'm over here. <laughs> uh, what's, uh, sir, sir, what is uh, trapping you? What's uh, on your arms? Cock me. Oh, nothing but cock me. That much cock meat will send, will send people right away, sir. All right. Uh, I guess that's it. Yep. Come on, Jimmy. No. I got I... the beat going. Let's go. I don't have any songs. No? Maybe. What's the beat? I don't know. All right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, stunt brain! Oh, oh wow, that's a good one. Like the bowl of turkey or two. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this bus is heading toward the cliff. It's and it's, no one can stop it. The brakes have failed. <laughs> right, <laughs> There's a brick wall with a cliff behind it. <laughs> And fucking, it's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> we're headed towards it with our fucking dumb chins out. We're hoping <laughs> it'll all work out. We're, we're hoping that someone's going to paint like a, like a tunnel entrance, like in the cartoons, <laughs> and we're going to be okay. That's two different companies emerging when we last year, <laughs> two different shows, best of competing against ourselves. <laughs> it's a fucking abomination. There's no way to spin it. They don't want to work with each we're other. We're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. <laughs> they love you in the U.S. and Canada, but not Philadelphia, not Las Vegas. All right, good. We'll take you off here. We believe in you here. We don't like you here, but you're killing the arbitrage ratings here. But all the PPM is really good here. Not particularly good there. Well, internal, internal stuff says that you did really good. You didn't want to on XM. Arbitrage said no one's listening to you. They're all listening to Howard, <laughs> fucking nightmare. <laughs> it's so complicated, dude. Just in New York alone, one day they, uh, 
I called up corporate. I go, so how are the ratings? And they're like, oh, you don't want to know. I'm like, well, I kind of do. <laughs> I mean, we uh, do this show. Yeah. <laughs> kind of do. Well, they weren't that good. And so then Aunt and I were depressed for a day, and then the PPMs came out, and they all of a sudden they're calling our phones and ringing off the hook. We have great, great news. For you great guys. news. Like, ratings ruled. What the fuck does what? that mean? Help me out here. In and one tell rating me system that thank God is going away in I think three months, eh, not so good in New York. But the new ratings that don't start until no November, real good. Yeah. With the same shitty rating system going away here says, hey, you guys are terrific in Boston. So we buy it. No good here. Good there. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking whole oh, life just sucks. We got, we got two executive producers now that are now going to have like a chemistry problem. They're going to be fighting it out, wondering who the top dog is. It's fucking that, awful. It's that's like, smart. There's going to be a fucking red line, and like stunt brains going to hand papers over it to Steve. No one's going to cross that red line. Yeah, it's like fucking North Korea, Korea, South Korea. They got to kind of communicate in, in in some sort of way, some capacity. Barely, I understand. That's why I picked Korea. <laughs> Here's not the fucking, stupid. Here's the phone call we're going to get yeah. sometime next week. Hello. My CBS ID is not working. <laughs> I can't seem to get in the building. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> the beauty of this whole thing is Steve has no idea that the writing's on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not that I don't know. I'm just... Get all my ducks in a row. There you <laughs> By the way, because I don't want to deal with the phone call after the show, that was purely for for joke purposes, Steve. Thank exactly. Writing yes. some blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking god! What? Yeah. And then the company says, "Yeah, you're not th you're not good in this city, but you're really good in this city." How does that? Yeah. Fucking Why? You How? Can't, Why? You can't feel comfortable. And then the anywhere. And then. Uh, then the shows they replaced us in in some of these markets are doing way, Tanking. way worse than we ever did. But I'll tell you what it is. They're paying them way, way less. Way worse. They're I know. That's the less. problem. And also, they could get them to go do the local shit. We all know that. I mean, it's it's like, you know. Right. They're probably still saving money because they're paying them nothing. And people will still advertise. Yes. Whatever. So we'll just enjoy this until they say, you know what? Uh, How's Lopez's show like doing in West Palm? Awful. Good. The show in Dallas that took over our hours? Awful. Is it bad? I thought they were like a local the show. The Philly station in general, because um, I don't know, I don't know how well Kid Chris is doing. I really don't. Yeah. But I know the station um, lost forty percent of their cum since we uh, left Philly. Forty percent. Forty percent. Forty fucking percent. And nice. there's some and, markets. And and especially with Philly, man, that was a slow one, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. We killed the first time in Philly, and it was it was a tough sell. But we did. We were turning it around when they uh, got rid of us, and that's why that one is so fucking. It's because of fucking XM's competition at times makes it difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, there had to be a way to work those two things. Because look, XM is. A, I did Minneapolis. I did a thousand people in Minneapolis. And, and we've, we've never, never been, been on, on there. regular radio. That's never. all XM, man. Uh, I, I just did. A, They're HBO fans, though, Jimmy. Nah, it's mostly opening after but open up. When Stupid Kenny walks on stage, they all cheer. Really? Um, some they all saw the special, but it's from the show. I'd say <sighs> seventy-five to eighty percent of people that come to see me know me specifically from, from this show. Time. A couple know me from fucking whether well, it's tough crowd or this, but it's it's all maybe even 80, 80, 85 percent know me from the, the ONA show. Right. I mean, uh, ooh, <laughs> dude, you might have to check. Uh, you might have to check that one. No, but that was a fucking warm, bubbly one. Oh, isn't that nice? And it goes down your leg a little bit, but just the warmness, nothing else? No, nothing, else? nothing came out. I like when you get a little shot of warm air and oh. you know there's nothing else going on. Just just a little shot of... I hope right now... Warm air. I hope oh, yeah. Bob is on the toilet and his, his feet are black because he's been he's been leaning on his legs so long. <laughs> I hope his feet are like two of those frozen cats. <laughs> you gotta put him down. How bad? People gotta come up and put a tent around him How and shoot him. Get over here, dude! How bad do you guys want to talk to Bob Kelly? Like, I... Oh, I, 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 in person. Unbelievable. Let's go over to his house and just, like, fucking bother him. I want to push him off the toilet. Yeah. And just watch him tumble onto his side and just with shit coming out. Yeah. Like we came lady. here to see... Yeah. We came here to see your relics. Where are they? Uh, I, ho I hope it's fucking... I hope it's, like, the fucking taboo from fucking the Brady Bunch. <laughs> he wipes out of his surfboard. Right. <laughs> fucking a thing falls off a bed, almost hits him. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> relics. What relic? What relics he brought back in, or, or in his intestines? <laughs> Fucking mud. Yeah, no kidding. He brought back some mud. <laughs> what an ass. I hope whatever he was was confiscated at the airport and they broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's a little plastic lizard. Can't Is bring it? that into the country, idiot. Yeah, they might have fleas. 